Because that's the only God that we serve. Our God is greater than any other God. You know there's gods out there in the world that, that has a little G because he's not a God or a sheep. It's real. Are they just made by hands, imaginations, and vain such things? Amen. But thank God that we serve God that's alive. Amen. That, that went to the cross of Calvary, willingly surrendered himself up to offer his life, his life. Yeah. That we might have a life that more abundant. That our life would become better, in other words, than any life anyone else could ever have. And we only have that because he said, my life is not so much that I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to give it to you. Yes, Greatest yes. gift of all, that you eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank God for that life, for that hope, for that future that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the victory, that's what we've been singing about yet, that we have in Him. Amen. Good to be a Christian now. Good to be alive. Good to be here in the Lord's house, and, and at this time we'd like to ask to get a couple of ushers to come and assist us from the VA, sir, if you would please. Excuse me. And Reverend Brock. Appreciate all the faith we give and support to the work of the Lord. We know all Christians do pay tithe, we like to give them an offerings. We have a link there if you're watching online, if you'd like to give it that way. Even sign up in the house of the Lord, uh, we give it that way. Rather than putting the, the finances in the bag. But either way, as you give, God blesses you for it. We appreciate that giving. That support to his work. We'd like to ask if we could to get a uh, reverend DA series. Please pray. Lord, thank you tonight for your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Let it go and meet the needs of the greatest work on earth in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. to come and worship in your house. We look to you, God, tonight to just unction, God, Pastor David, fresh and anew by the Holy Spirit. Give him the words that will speak to every heart, 
every life. God, let us respond to that which the Spirit of God expressed and speaketh to us personally and individually, Lord God, that we understand what you have made us to be because of who you are. We thank you tonight for all that you'll do. And give you the praise and the glory for it as we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's a new year. Amen. It's a new opportunity. Yes. And last I checked, most people don't come into a new year and say, I want to do less than I did last year. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to do as good as I did last year. Right. If we can hold back some of those blessings, please God, and you know, you know, don't don't, don't take care of me as much. Boss, don't give me as many hours. And, no, that's not the stuff we think of. That's right. We talk about, I want to do greater things. I want to do more things. I want to do what I can. I want to better myself. I want to be better than I was previously. Amen. That truly is the goal. Is every day, can you say you went to bed better than the day before? You went to bed greater than you were that morning? That truly is the goal, the desire. But that's also the desire for this year. As we're well aware, greater things will be done in 2021. Amen. Greater things. Greater. But that applies to the church as well as it applies to us. Right. It applies to us as well. It is time to have a greater relationship Amen. with God. A greater relationship with God. James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God. And he will draw an eye to you. Yeah. Cleanse your hands, ye sinner, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. But it says, draw an eye to God. See, the key there is, as you get closer to God, strangely enough, he's closer to you. That's right. And as you get closer to God, then God makes steps to get closer to you as well. He wants to be closer to you, why? Because you're his child. You're desiring that relationship. You're desiring for him to be around. Because he's a perfect gentleman. If you say, God, I really don't want you around right now. And he says, okay. And steps back. But no, that should never be our desire, our want. No, God, be greater in my life. I want you to have more control over my life. I want you to use me in greater ways. I want to be closer to you, God. Yes. Because as you get closer to God, that fire within you burns brighter. As you get closer to God, other people start to notice. As you get closer to God, you get closer to your family. You get closer to your friends. You get closer to your neighbors. You get closer to people around you. Why? Because the relationship between you and God is correct. The relationship between you and God is what you desire. The relationship being closer with Him makes everything else go better and easier. Yes. Why? Because you have a relationship between you and God, right? So it's a whole lot harder to snap at your family member. Because you have love in you because God's love. Jesus is love. And as you get closer to Him, He gets closer to you. You feel that relationship with God get better. Yes. Get better. Oh, preacher, I don't have a relationship with God. Perfect. So our relationship is a greater relationship. Right. God's still sitting there waiting for you. Standing there saying, as you step closer to me, I'll come closer to you. As you want to come and be cleansed of your sins, I'll be here to wash you. I'm here as you desire a greater relationship. Yes. But that greater relationship then builds us up to a greater Outreach. Right. A greater outreach within ourselves. Once that relationship is right between you and God, that outreach becomes easier. That greater outreach, as it says in Luke 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servants, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Yes. He said, Go out to the highways, the byways, the hedges, the, go out everywhere. Go down the back roads. Go up the main roads. Go wherever you go. Compel them. Compel. So it shows that there's some effort there, right? You have to compel them. He doesn't say it's going to be easy. Because in this particular situation, it wasn't. 
He had already pronounced the people he had invited to the wedding that it was easy. They had an invitation in the mail. And all they had to do was show up. And they didn't. So he said, fine. Go to these people I didn't originally send an invitation to and tell them to come on out. Tell them to come and enjoy the feast. Come them, tell them to come in so my house can be filled. God's desire is that his house is full. But that requires us to have a greater outreach, a greater vision for those around us, a greater outreach to those around us. Reach out to them. Compel them. Convince them. Me and Brother Samuel were talking before church. We were talking about something. He goes, maybe you're supposed to be a part-time salesman. I said, no, I'm already a salesman. He goes, yeah, you are. I was like, I'm a salesman because i got to sell Jesus Christ to each and every person. i got to let them know the value of Jesus Christ to their life. i got to let them know, look, yes, God wants to do something for you, but God wants you. You yourself are valuable to God, so come to God. Yes. And you've got to convince them that, look, God wants you, but I'm broken, I'm bruised, I'm battered, I have a horrible year. It's a new year. Amen. New you. That's right. It's all about that, so come on. God doesn't care about that part. God doesn't care about that. He wants to come and heal the brokenhearted. Yes. He wants to heal those that have bad relationships with themselves. That he wants to heal those that have been running from him. He wants to draw them back and say, I love you, my child. He doesn't care that you've been running for years. He cares that you come. He's like the father of that prodigal son. So what is the prodigal son came back to say, look, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. I shouldn't even be called your son. Just make me a servant. The father was standing there saying, my child, I've been looking for you. Welcome back, my child. Kill the fatted calf. Go, get a good robe. Put a ring on his finger. My son is back. No, Dad, I don't deserve to be called your son. My son is back. Right. It doesn't change your position. And we need to go out and let them know, look, it doesn't matter what's been going on in your life. God doesn't care about everything else you did. God just wants you. You are valuable to God. He sent me to tell you. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants you. Amen. Particularly you. Yes. But my neighbor would be a God wants you. Right. And then you can talk to your neighbor about coming. Amen. Then we can talk to your neighbor about coming. But you come first. He says, compel them, convince them, tell them the benefit it is to them. That's what the salesman does, right? He convinces you by parting with your money <laughs> is better for you because you have this item than to right. hang on to your money. That's right. right. <laughs> That's what he convinces you to do. See, we're not begging for money. We're out there saying, look, Give up your life for Jesus Christ. Amen. It's better for you. But I don't have control of my life anymore. You go anyways. If you don't, if, if God's not in control of your life, you don't have control of it. The devil does. He tells you to jump how high and go how far. And what? Because the pleasures of sin are only for a season. That's right. And then you gotta go deeper in to find more pleasure. That's right. a statement. I'm not a statement, a story. There's a story of this park ranger that was out cutting some wood, cutting, doing some, some trimming in this forest area to help, help take care of it. And he got stuck in the snow and the cold with a blizzard coming in. And he got cold, he bundled up as best as he could with what he had, but his jacket had been ripped in the process. So he wasn't only surrounded with warmth. So there he was, starting to fall asleep. He was going to sleep when his dog started barking and licking his face. The dog that had been with him for years, helping him. 
find other people and do his duties as a ranger, park ranger. Started licking him and waking him up. So he woke up, shook it off, and started walking. And he ended up surviving. But as he told the story, he goes, it's a good thing my dog alerted me and woke me up and got my attention. He said, because as you freeze to death, you feel warm and comfortable. As you're freezing to death, your body starts feeling warm and comfortable and lethargic. So you just want to go to sleep uncomfortable. It's okay. So God sends us to be that one. Hey, wake up! You're falling asleep. Sin is putting you to sleep and making you feel good, but it's killing you. This is not what you want. You want Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. You need to hear the message of God, and I'm here to tell you about it. Amen. So this year is the year to have a greater outreach, to get a greater voice, to greater compel them to come. But I can't do that. Well, then it's time for greater faith. Because yes, you can. That's right. Yes, you can. You have a voice. God's blessed us all here with a voice, right? Amen. We've heard many of them. Yes. <laughs> We've heard the voices. So if you have a voice, you can tell someone about Jesus. That's right. I know I can't. I'm too shy. Hmm. Were you too shy to tell that bank teller how much money you wanted out of your account? Were you too shy to ask the person stocking the shelf? So you're out of this item. Do you have more in the back? Were you too shy to speak up when you needed something? No. But greater faith. Greater faith in God. And the apostles said, Luke 17, 5 through 6, and the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. They had the same desire. Increase our faith, Lord. Yes. And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Well, I don't have that much faith. Right, so it's time for greater faith. Amen. Build it up to a mustard seed sized faith. Small, small seed. Well, I got a half of one. Well, praise God. Give God that half a mustard seed and say, God, I need you to grow this for me and heal it. Give God that and be like that man that said, God, I believe. Help my unbelief. All right. God, I really believe and I want to believe and I need my, but I don't quite have all the mustard seed yet. That's okay. Give it to God. The mender of it all, the creator of it all, yes. the one who spoke the universe into existence, the one that spoke the very trees into existence and told them, give seeds that you may grow. Give it back to God who created that seed, yes. and God can help you build it back to a full mustard seed. When you give it to him and say, okay, God, I need greater faith. And I want to have the faith that I can speak and it will happen for me. I want to have that faith that when I speak and talk to people, when I talk to myself even. All right. That come on, self, you can do this. Yes. That I can believe it. That when I sit there and kneel at the altar and ask you for something, God, I can believe you're going to move on my behalf. Right. Not just on their behalf. Well, I've heard the stories of them. Yes, you have. Because they shared it with you. Because God did it for them. We've always been. We've all been there before. But we prayed for something and said, well, I pray, but I'm not sure. Well, God, let us grow our faith to have greater faith this year that we can pray and say, I know God's going to do it. I know God's going to do it. God's going to answer that prayer. Well, how do you know? He 
He's a God that answers prayer. That's how I know. Because he's a God that's answered my prayers before, so he'll answer them again. He's the exact same God. The God didn't change. Right. He's a greater God. Yes. He answered before. He can do this. Yes, but you don't understand. God answers big prayers. He answers the small ones too. Right. Like that child sitting beside her bed. Reciting the alphabet, A through Z. And then she said, A through Z again. Recited the alphabet and stood up and got out of the bed and was saying goodnight to her parents. They said, What are you doing? I was praying. Oh, it sounded like you were reciting the alphabet. I, I, I was. But God knew the alphabet. He could put all the words together for me. <laughs> Have the faith as a child. But God, I'm just going to speak my heart and know and believe that you'll take care of it, God. Amen. That I just have to do my part and you'll take care of the rest. I want to have that greater faith, that greater vision of the faith, that greater, Lord, increase our faith. Increase it so that I can speak to this sycamore tree in my life that's blocking my path. And say, be removed. Be planted over there somewhere. Right. And it'll happen. It'll obey you. Why? Because you have the faith behind it and say, God, you're going to do that. I know you will. And I have absolute faith and trust in you. This is the year for greater miracles. John 14 and 12. Very, very I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Okay. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. Elisha had to be there when Elisha, Elijah went to be able to get a double portion. Right. That's all he desired. What can I give you? Just a double portion. Yeah. Nothing serious. <laughs> Just twice as much as what you are. Right. Mm. That's all you wanted. He said, okay, if you're there with me when I'm taking, then you'll have that. But you've got to stick there with me. Right. Jesus is no different. He offers us greater things and more things. Why? Because he was on earth for a very short period of time. He allows us to stay on earth until we die. Which normally is longer than that short ministry he had. Correct. Normal. Right. So, we're going to do greater things and more things because God allows us. But why? Because we walk with him. Because we keep our eyes on him. Because we have a relationship with him. Good. Because we have the faith in him. It all comes back to him. But he allows us to do greater miracles. And this year, we can see greater miracles. We can see greater things in our very midst. Because even in this horrible year last year, the people love to say, it was so horrible, and so bad, and focus on all the negative. Have you stopped and remembered what God did for you? Have you stopped and looked around and seen the miracles that God still did? Because in the midst of it all, there's still stories of people that were miraculously healed. Right. There's still stories of people that had cancer that God snatched it out of their life and out of their body. Yeah. There's still stories of people who were very ill that are on their deathbed and God said, it's not your time yet because right. there were people praying. There's still stories of people that no matter what was going on, that faith moved upon the scene. God moved upon the scene. Yeah. There was a group of people somewhere praying for that person and God touched them and right. moved in their life yeah. and gave a miracle in their life. And it's still stories of what happened this last year even. Yeah. In the midst of all the horror, God still moved. There's even some here that God did that for. Amen. In their very life, God moved in mighty ways, made miracles happen before their very eyes. Yes. But this year, we can have greater miracles. Why? Because we build off the previous ones That's right. and say, because God did that, God can do this. Because God did that, 
And as I draw close to him, he empowers me to do greater miracles and greater things. He that believeth on me, the things I do, shall he do also. And greater. Why? Because I go into my Father. He goes there to God. He's there with God. So it's simple for him to say, hey, God, let's go do that for me. Why? Because it brings glory back to God. As God moves in people's lives in ways that only God can, then it brings the glory back to God. Amen. It brings the glory back to God. I've seen it happen too many times. I've seen it happen too many times where what? Things transpire in somebody's life. And the doctors are stumped, except for the ones that believe in God. Amen. And then they say, well, it had to be God. Right. It had to be God. There's no other explanation than God. Right. Because we have all the evidence proving it was there, and then it wasn't. What changed? Well, I was praying for this last week. Yeah. Well, somebody's been praying for me. Well, God touched me. Well, then it was God. It was God. And so based on that, God can do greater things. Because as we build up our faith and as we believe, we go out and want to do greater things for him. Which then leads to what? Greater victories. This last year, can you look at your life, this previous year, and say, well, God gave me a victory in this in my life. Even one thing. Even one thing you can stop and say, man, praise God. He helped me get victory over this. Right. Or gave me a victory in this battle or this situation. God moved in my life in this thing. Right. Yes. So this year, it can be greater. Why? Because it comes back to this. We still serve. The same great God. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. It's the exact same God that we go to pray to. It's the exact same God that's still sitting there on the throne. It's the exact same God that stepped out of that grave that day and said, I'm done. I've got to the keys of death, hell, and the grave. I've got the power back, so it cannot bite my children anymore. It will not hurt my children anymore. Yes, they'll die, but they don't, the death doesn't have the victory. What happens is they die, and I unlock that door and say, come on home with me instead. Don't worry about that. I've got the victory over it all, so you can just come up with me. It's the exact same God that did that. It's the exact same God that moved there in that woman's life, there at the woman at the well, and said, look, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to save you. I want to help you to be what you need to be. That exact same God is moving here today. The exact same God that spoke to Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. Come out of your grave clothes. Come out of your grave that you're in. Come out of the dead situation you're in. Come out of that. That exact same God stands here and says, come! Yes. And calls you by name. Amen. And says, come forth. Come with me. Amen. The exact same God that had that man that was carried there on a mattress on a bed and lowered him to the roof and he looked at and said, Thy sins be forgiven me. Still stands here and says, Thy sins be forgiven me. Do you accept my offer? It's the same God yesterday today, and forever. Amen. So that means we can leave out of this service tonight and still have faith that God can move to that co-worker we go to talk to tomorrow. That God can move in that person pumping gas next door to us or the next station right next to us. Can have faith in the preacher, the social distancing and wearing masks and you know, people are trying to and, and, I mean, Reverend Wright, you know 
notice a Steelers bumper sticker on their car, you're going to say something to them. <laughs> right? You're going to say something to them. It doesn't matter. All that doesn't matter. That's just in me. Tries to throw up barriers. Well, you're this and that. You look intimidating. And you're this and you're that. No, I serve the exact same God that somebody came and knocked on my door. Whether it was physically knocked on my door or came across my path and knocked on my heart's door and said, Hey, God loves you. God cares about you. That exact same God that reached out to you can reach out to them through you. Amen. Because we serve the same great God. Yeah. He's never changed. Yeah. We don't have to worry. You know, every four years, six years, two years, people get all concerned with the election. How much are things going to change if we vote this way or that way or the other way? With this new person in charge, God will be the exact same one in charge from the very beginning. God's never changed. God's never changed his word. God's never went back on a promise. God has never went back on anything he's told us. He's the exact same God who sits up there in heaven. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So as we get greater, we're just trying to catch up to him. Because he's still the same great God. But he encourages us to get greater in him. Deeper in him. Get closer to him. Reach out more for him. Believe in him so that he can perform miracles. He can give us victory because he's still the same. Amen. So through all of it, there's what? One thread. God. Amen. God. God. Greater things will be done in 2021 through Yes, we'll have to put feet and action to it. Yes, we'll have to do things. But you know what? God's going to do it. God's already done it. Are you ready to claim it by faith tonight? With every head bowed, every eye closed, with reverence to God. Greater he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Tonight, God calls us to be greater in him, with him, and through him. We have to realize that he is the one that allows us to be greater. He is the one that makes us greater. So tonight, come sure that that relationship with God is greater. And if you haven't created a relationship with him yet, tonight's the perfect night. God stands here and says, come unto me, all ye who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm standing here tonight so that this year can be greater for you in every way when it comes to God. Father, we thank you for this message that you laid upon our heart. We thank you, God, for the message we've delivered that's now on everyone's heart. We pray right now, God, that you just let it find a resting spot, grow seeds in their life, God, and fruit from those seeds that have been planted. We know, God, that you are in control. You are here, and you want us to be greater in you, Lord. God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise tonight as we come searching to be greater in you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you all the mind. We'll see you Tuesday night for Bible study. We're here tonight.